Hey, Jennifer, how are you? So the poof is strong today. The poof is strong. We're going to talk about selling jewelry today. So we're going to wait just a minute. I'm good. I'm good. Real good. I just ate my lunch. So I'm real good. Well, I just had a little duck lunch. So anyway, I'm put that out of my way. So I don't get it mixed up with something. So anyway, so I've been working on shipping. Oh, there. Some people are coming in. Hey, people who just came in, I saw you. Somebody keeps coming in and out. So be like St. Peter. Either get in or out. <laughs> so anyway. But we're just going to talk about selling jewelry. So this is going to be just a little information. There's um, a lot of people out here selling jewelry. I mean a lot of people. Literally tons of people selling jewelry. So um, we're going to talk about that. And talk about. Good, because you need to start selling some. Uh, talk about how to handle the fact that the market right now is oversaturated with people trying to sell jewelry on YouTube. The market is saturated with people trying to sell jewelry on eBay. The market is saturated with people trying to sell jewelry on Etsy. So what can you do to make your jewelry sell? What can you do? Hey, Hey, Peggy, how are you? So, and I don't have all the answers because I've been doing this for two and a half years and I still do not have, hey, Darlene Buckley, <laughs> uh, I still do not have a jewelry sale every day. So, I do not have a jewelry sale. Sometimes I go several days that I don't have a sale. So, and I'm talking about an actual sale on Etsy, eBay, Poshmark, something like that. Um, you know, I do the auctions. But the auctions have even changed for me greatly. Last year at this time, there wasn't as many people doing it. So I could easily make um, good money. I mean, I was making really close to $1,500 a month doing jewelry auctions twice a month. So, um, well, maybe three times a month, not just twice. So now it's not like that. It is not like that at all. So, my first thing is my first thing that I say that you need to do about selling jewelry is you need to know what you're selling. Okay. You need to know if you're selling something that is a good brand. You need to know if it's a resellable piece. You need to know what you're selling. Okay. Um, there are people out there selling that have no clue what they're selling. And sometimes that might benefit us, but it's not going to, if you're going to be one of those people selling things, you don't know what you've got, then you're going to end up losing money. And I've lost money because I didn't put in the time and the effort to know that uh, something was worth something. I, I have lost money. Uh, for example, I sold a bangle. A moon glow bangle that was a um what was that brand can't remember what brand it was anyway it went in a lot of bangles and the bangle price got drove up to it was a lot the bangle the price of the lot got drove up to 45 and that's where it sold well that one bangle was well worth more than a hundred dollars but i didn't research it so i didn't know but the person that bought it obviously knew so that's the first thing you need to do. You need to research and know what you have, what you're selling. Okay. You also need to uh, make sure that you're offering things that are good. For example, I don't like when I buy things that look good on screen and when I get them, they're yuck. I don't like it. It doesn't happen very often, but you, it does happen to all of us. So make sure what you're offering is good because if, if the word is out that, hey, I spent this many dollars and what I got was junk and I can't even get 50 cents out of it, it's not going to, it's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help. 
I mean, it's not going to help their cause or your cause or anything. It's not, it's not good because word, word gets out, you know, it's like there's, I mean, like an undercurrent that there's a undercurrent of people saying, oh, this is a good person to buy from, from. I like to buy from these people. And I have people that I love to buy from and people that I steer clear of buying from. So um, once you ever buy something from somebody that you really like, and um, then you go back to that well. You just do. So make sure you're creating a well that people want to come back to. Okay. So be fair. Be fair. Okay. We all want to find the Hope Diamond and sell it for millions of dollars. But the chances of that happening to us are not real slim. So be fair. Uh, sell your prices. Set, set fair prices that everybody can afford. Um, here's the big thing. You've got to diversify. I cannot depend on just selling jewelry on auctions to be my only income. So you can sell on eBay. You can sell on Etsy. Hey, Kathleen Brandt. You can sell on Poshmark. Poshmark is the simplest thing to sell on. I mean, seriously, Anybody that makes Poshmark hard, I don't know how it happens. Macari is just as easy as Poshmark. You download an app on your phone, take the pictures in the app, put your information in, and bam, it's listed. So, um, I also take my things to a booth. I have two booths. I take it to booths. So, um, you have a set price for items on Etsy. I don't do set prices because um, there are too many variables when it comes to jewelry. Now, if this is things you're making, I can understand that. Uh, but if it's if it's um, items that are vintage and stuff like that, then I, 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 I say do your research. You're, the best thing you can do for yourself is do your research. Um, also, if you have people in... in this this may seem a little pushy and if it if it feels pushy to you i'm sorry i have one lady who watches my videos who i know collects a certain brand i save them for her and then when i have a whole bunch i make a video and i send it to her and tell her this is what i want for these items if you would like to buy them let me know and she does most of the time she buys most of them so maybe you can build a rapport like that. You have people that you know likes a certain brand and you can build like that. Um, I also have people that I've built rapport with that I send a message and say, hey, I'd like to buy one of your lots. Um, so you build up that rapport between your customers. But can I can I just say something and um and I'm, I see this a lot. I get a lot of questions asked me and I don't mind answering questions. I do not mind answering questions at all. But I get a lot of people ask me questions and they say, what am I doing wrong? Why isn't this selling? I, I done an auction and nobody came. I done a pop up sale and nobody wanted to buy it. And I done this. It takes a while. I mean, I've been doing this two and a half years and I still, last night, my auction, I offered 50 something items. I still had about 10 of them that did not sell. So just because you've been, I mean, you've got to build up. You First of all, you've got to build up a rapport between you and your customers. You've got to build up clientele. Anybody who does sales knows that you have to have clientele, right? So um, you have to build up clientele. This can't, this is not an overnight I can sell jewelry. I tell anybody that asks me, if you want to sell something, jewelry is not what I would get into, especially if you're looking for fast sales. I have things, I mean, jewelry is a long tail sale on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, all that. It's a long, long, long tail sale. So your pop-up didn't even get views. But you know what? Don't give up, kitty. Try it again. Try it again because as people get to know who you are, you just keep trying. You know, some of our first auctions were not overly successful. Uh, but we, me and Bougie started back when auctions, everybody wasn't doing it. We started 
you know, we were kind of in the first wave when we started doing it and everybody wasn't doing it. So uh, be prepared to put in the time. You know, last night my I was online for over four hours. Uh, Ken and Barbie, they stay online from, for six to eight hours. You have to be prepared. It can't be something... It can't be something that you expect. I can go on 30 minutes an hour and make a lot of money. Now, I do quick pop-up sales like that, like I've done that ring sale. Uh, I had just a few things. I had all the same thing. I want to do it fast and go like, you know. And so, I didn't make a whole lot of money doing it, but I made a little bit extra. And when you when this is a way that you make a living, every little extra bit helps. So, so uh, if you've been selling for a while or if you've sold and there's something that has just popped out that has helped you a lot, no, my, also a suggestion is have a community. I mean, th this is our community and we go to each other. But uh, also, I, I do want to point this out. There's more to an auction than just having jewelry. Because let me show you. The, these are not things for sale. Okay, but let's just pretend like I'm doing an auction right now. Okay, do you see how, that's okay, do you see, first of all, I gave you no information about this, so how are you going to know what you're buying? So, first of all, you've got to know what you're selling, and you've got to be able to portray what I'm selling, okay? This is a, I think it's BSK, but I'm not positive, so, and I'm not selling it, but it is actually, no. This one here is a, a SOB. And y'all, there, there is a company called SOB. This one here is a soft company. <laughs> Even that messy, you'd still want to buy my little girl necklace. I'm sorry, my little girl necklace is not for sale. So anyway, hey, Perla. Hey, Misha. Uh, so I missed you last night. Misha, I showed something and, and Kimmy says, oh, that would be perfect for Misha. I missed you. So, uh, this is the one that Susan Gill repaired for me. She done such a good job on it. I don't know if y'all remembered when I showed it, but she done an excellent job on it. It's gorgeous. And then this one here is one that she sent me just because she had one just like the one she repaired for me. So, she sent me this little black one. Isn't she pretty? She's so pretty. So, anyway, so, oh, uh, anyhow, but you've got to be able, first of all, you've got to be able to to portray and to describe and to tell all the information that you know about your item, okay? Uh, when, have you ever been to an auction live, a live auction? That's fun. I love when, when I have company. So family always comes before auctions, Misha, always. But I know it's hard when you miss and you want to be there with all your other friends too. So, But uh, uh, you, have you ever been to a live auction? Okay, live auction, they show you what they, they're selling. They say, hey, Kathy Weezer, they say, um, this is what I have. This is how much we're going to start the bidding on. You're bidding. The sale is final. This is what you're buying. Look at it good as you can. They lay it all out and they show it. You get to preview it, okay? So one of the things that we don't have the real good pleasure, I mean, we can do it, but then it turns into a huge, oh, listen, I'm addicted to them. That I'm I'm not really allowed because I'm pretty sure that there's a treasure in that box of five dollar junk. So then we come home with a bunch of five dollar junk boxes, and then you got to figure out what to do with it. So anyway, the last time I went, I spent way too much money. So I haven't been in over two years. So anyway, but so you've got to know what you've got. You've got to present it good. Here's something else that's going to be really hard for some people because this does not fit their personality. Part of doing an auction, and I know this is going to sound crazy, is being an entertainer. And you're all going, but I'm just trying to sell jewelry. I'm just trying to sell jewelry. 
But if I cannot get your interest and keep your interest, then you're going to wander in and out. You're going to miss the good things I'm offering. So I've got to keep my conversation. I've got to keep my interaction with you guys entertaining enough that you want to stay and see what else I'm going to say. What am I going to tell y'all? What kind of crazy thing am I going to, what am I going to sing? What kind of crazy song is she going to make up here in a minute? You've got to keep their interest. If you can't do that, then that's going to be part of your issue about having a successful auction. Okay. Also, you have to be willing to know that people are going to come into your auction. They want to come in and see what's going on. They might not want to buy. That's okay. Like Barbie says all the time, Barbie says, just come in and be part of it. Join the conversation. Be part of it. So that's right. You just go. Yeah, so, and I know that sometimes, it, like, last night I started getting really tired at the four-hour mark, and, uh, but I had been up all day, I had worked all day long, not on just my auction, but I had worked on one of my other jobs, I have, y'all know I have several other jobs, so, anyway, so, uh, you, it's good to see you, uh, Peyton, hey, Kathy, so I think, oh, Michelle, oh, hi. I think I said hi to Perla when she came in. So, and Tati, I uh, also, I think I missed you. Y'all, if you've not, if you don't subscribe to Tati's Closet, she does informational videos that you can learn a lot about. She talks about stones. I love the one she done about tiger's eye. Um, but you have to learn how to interact with people. If you don't have good people skills, then my suggestion to you is do pop-up sales. <laughs> and I know that sounds, that almost sounds cruel, but it is. It's do a pop-up sale. Have any of y'all watched uh, Carol's pop-up sales? Now I'm not saying that Carol doesn't interact good with people. What I'm saying is Carol does pop-up sales that are amazing. You can learn a lot from her. Do a pop-up sale. Learn how they're doing those pop-up sales that is successful. Um, Vanessa does great pop-up sales. Uh, so if you don't have the personality that can interact with people real good, uh, then maybe auctions is not for you. I mean, does that mean that's the end of the world? Does that mean that you cannot uh, sell jewelry? No, it doesn't mean because they're... Guys, the internet is an open book. The internet is an open book for us to make ourselves a business. And you've got to look at it like a business. This is, I mean, when I first started this before Dave got sick, this was my hobby. I love jewelry. It was a hobby. Then Dave got sick and poop got real. Sorry, that's a little uh, vulgar, but life got real. And so then I needed to do this to make a living. Okay. So, and pop-ups are super bargain shopping. I cannot think of her name. Um, Carol's pop-ups. She does great pop-ups. Um, if you have really expensive things, really expensive things, my suggestion to you is if you cannot sell in an auction, if you don't have the personality to sell in an auction, Pop-ups, it's harder to sell expensive things in pop-ups. So, that's why uh, Peyton has an awesome eBay channel. I mean, uh, eBay, yeah, eBay store. So, so my suggestion is eBay, Poshmark, if it's vintage, Etsy. Guys, there's nothing wrong. Yes, there's work. And here's another thing, okay? I, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to put it out there. If you are not willing to work, don't expect to make money. Sorry, this is work. This is a job just like I go push a time clock every day. This is a job. I come to my computer every day, whether it's re doing research, whether it's taking pictures, whether it's listing, whether it's getting ready for an auction, doing shipping, whatever. It is a job. If you are not willing to work, People are not going to hand you money. People are not going to just hand you money. Look, we all work hard for our money. So you've got to be willing to work. If you love jewelry enough that you want to sell it and it's a passion for you, you've got to work towards it. You can't 
you cannot just say, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to make $100 selling jewelry today. Chances are you're not going to do that. So, yeah. And ship. Yeah. If you sell something, make sure you ship it. Because if you don't, nobody's ever going to buy from you again. Plain and simple. If I go into an auction and somebody says that, 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 uh, um, and guys, this is why I gave up on buying on Facebook auctions. There are some people there that ship once a month. Uh-uh. I am not buying from you if you ship once a month. I'm not buying from you if you ship twice a month. And it's very likely I'm not going to buy from you if you only ship once a week. Sorry. I mean, when you pay me, I'm usually at my computer and I get my little ding ding on my phone that says I got paid and I print my shipping right then. Now, at the end of the day, at the end, I wait till the end of the day, right before the post office closes, before I take this stuff to the post office. Otherwise, I'd run to the post office 101 time. So, top things I want you to take away from this. Auctions require personality. They just do. If you if you're not a people person, if you um, don't like to interact with people, if you have trouble making conversation, um, chances are your auctions are not going to do real good. Okay. Number two, this business is not an overnight business. You cannot just start selling jewelry. And in three months, expect that you're going to be selling the same amount of jewelry that I do or the same amount of jewelry that Barbie Crafts does or the same amount of jewelry that April does. Okay. Yes, the more you are on your selling apps, if you list daily on any of them, that increases your sales. Just does. It, it, it pushes you up in the algorithms all that. The third thing is I want you to know is you got to know your stuff. You know what? You have to know your stuff. Now, the third thing is you also have to realize that your time is money, but you cannot price yourself out of a sales range. Okay. If I spend an hour researching something that is only worth $4, I'm not getting anything for that. So you've got to be able to recognize this is junk. This is something that can go to the dollar bin. This is something that can go in a crafting lot. There's nothing wrong with putting good jewelry in a crafting lot that can be taken apart. Because if it's not worth enough to sell, maybe the parts of it is worth enough for a crafter to use. Okay. Price will sell itself if you start low. Yeah, it will. You're right, Barbie, but if you start too low, sometimes uh, you you uh, don't get what you put in it. So you have to make sure that you're not starting so low that you are not getting what you put in it. Because you don't want to, you know, most of my auctions that I start, uh, I start between 3 and $5. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see me start something at $8. Well, that's because I've paid more than 3 to $5 for it. So I can't start it lower than what I paid for it because there are chances that it might not go up anymore. So, um, and you know what? Here's something that I think is very important. Do I think pricing low scares away sales on eBay and Etsy and, or, okay, on Etsy. I do think that if you price too low, people are going to think something's wrong with it. So, I think if it, if you price too low, people will think something's wrong with it when you're listing on a platform, okay? Especially if you have an item, say I have a Monet jewelry set that is a matching set, okay? And I paid $2 for this matching set at an awesome sale. Now, if I go online and I look and I see that other people have this same matching set and they're selling it for forty to fifty dollars, if I price mine at not fifteen dollars, even though I've made thirteen dollars on a two dollar investment, 
more than likely it's not going to sell because everybody's going to say, hey, what's wrong with it? Why does she have it so much lower than everybody else's? So that's why I say you've got to know your product. You've got to know where is a good point, where is a good price point, where is a point that you can, you're making money, but you're not driving away customers because they think there's something wrong with your items. Make sure you're taking good pictures. Guys, your pictures is what's going to sell. And if you're doing an auction, make sure you have a good internet connection and make sure you have a good video set up that you're videotaping good. When I first started my auctions, I was using my laptop camera. Not a good idea. They, it doesn't do the best. I have a Logitech. Uh, I think it's a nine. It takes does really good. And on the new thing, on the new app, on the travel yard, it actually, StreamYard, I'm sorry, I keep saying travel yard. StreamYard, it actually really, really clear. Really, really clear. So there are tons of videos. I'm going to suggest some videos that you watch. Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, has tons of videos about taking pictures, about listing, about pricing, about sourcing. She has tons of she has a video that'll cover just about anything about shipping i have some shipping videos uh i also also here's something if you're selling um uh, if you are selling in a mark in a place like this like where you're selling on youtube or you're selling on facebook i feel like now this is my opinion and everybody has an opinion just like you have a nose and some smells and some don't so anyway uh I feel like if you are doing this where you're selling at a platform that is not like through eBay, Etsy and all that, where you have the protection of that platform, then you need to offer your people who are buying from you the protection that PayPal offers you. So that being said, I think you should learn how to make a PayPal invoice and send it through PayPal and that you should only accept PayPal as payment. Or there are a few other more online payments, but something that has protection for you and for them. That makes people feel safer to buy from you. Okay. When people buy from you through PayPal, uh, that makes them feel safer. So guys, these are just a few thoughts that I really wanted to share because there's a lot of questions going on around. I get a lot of questions. I usually get a question every week about why didn't my thing sell? Why am I not having good sales? Why is this not happening for me? It's not an overnight miracle. I'm sorry. It's not. You have to build relationships. You just have to build relationships with people. Keep plugging away. Do not give up. Do not give up. So um, just don't give up. But make sure that you're offering your customer the best thing that you can offer and still make profit for yourself, but also make sure you're protecting them and protecting yourself. So, yeah, it's got to be through a side I trust. So there are a few people that I mean, there are a few people that literally if like, say, Darlene, my friend Darlene, she was in here a while ago, I think Darlene uh, uh, Buckland. I trust Darlene that if Darlene, I, if I messaged Darlene and said, hey, Darlene, I want to buy one of your boxes. And she said, hey, my PayPal's messed up. Could you just send me a, a money order of that? I would send it to her in her heartbeat because I know that Darlene, I can trust Darlene. There, there are people, Barbie, there are a bunch of y'all that I've built up that kind of relationship and I would trust you in a heartbeat. But there are also some that if they told me to send money, I'd say, you know what? I don't think I want it. So anyway, so so uh, anyhow, hold on, I need to hide this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, so um, anyhow, so guys, uh, y'all, this is so funny. Okay, I'm sorry, Kevin Green. I, it it just struck me funny. I don't know if you're a real person or not, but your uh, uh, your message made me think that you're trolling me. So anyway, uh, 
Yes. If you, and here's just matching earrings for a box. If you, if you ask me to pay with a money order, if you've bought from me before, I usually will agree to that. But from now on, I'm only accepting U.S. Postal money orders. Y'all, I had a money order come to me and I know that the person that bought it did not mean for this to all happen. But it turned the bank like freaked out because it said international money order on it. They're like, we can't take this, you know. And basically this, she bought it in at a money store and, and it was just, it was. So finally I took it to another bank, the same branch, same bank, but a different branch. And they researched it and they're like, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know why they freaked out. So anyway, so, but, uh, but guys, don't let fear and don't let, um, unwillingness to do the work keep you from selling your great jewelry because it does take work but it's not like it's not like having to get out and dig a ditch you know it's not it's not like having to work outside in Arkansas weather with no air conditioning I get to sit in my air conditioned room and sort jewelry and play in my jewelry all day long and yes it's work but I love it I absolutely love it. And maybe that's where where some of it is. That may be where the breakdown is. Maybe it's not a love and it's not a passion for you. You know what? If it's not a love and it's not a passion, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you need to find something that is a love and is a passion for you and go do it. So I want you to be blessed. I want you to remember that Barbie and Ken have an auction tonight. And remember, guys, if you have forgot this, I sell mystery boxes and I sell jewelry boxes that I will curate to what you want. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to message me on on eBay. I mean, on eBay, on Facebook, on you've got my email, cndloving at yahoo.com. So <laughs> you don't live in Arkansas, do you, Peyton or Texas? <laughs> or Alabama, or Mississippi. We live in the humidity state. Who wants to go dig a ditch in humidity? Not this chick. So anyway, so I am going to go. This was a short one. We were about 40 minutes, well, about 30 minutes. I was a little bit late coming on. So, um, but do yourself a favor. Reevaluate. You know what? It's fine anytime to step back and say, is this really what I want to to do for the rest of my life for me maybe for the rest of my life maybe for the next 10 years who knows maybe for the next year maybe something else will come along that grabs my passion and i'm saying hey hey there's cricket maybe and i'm saying i'm more passionate about that than i am anything else cricket you caught us right at the very end so i my suggestion to you is find you a friend that knows a lot about what's going on and um work hard work hard we can do this and we're here's another thing we're not in competition i am not competing against barbie i'm not competing against april i'm not competing against peyton i'm not competing against anybody the only place i compete the only person i compete with is myself i want to be better than i was yesterday i want to offer better things than i did last week i want to offer you all and anybody else that comes in to any of my stores i want to offer you the best i can offer so just remember it's not a competition it's not and we're all friends so y'all have a blessed day and thumbs up and we'll see you next week for another love and jewelry and i've changed the name of it to love and jewelry 101 okay so that y'all know that i it's going to be a teachy teachy kind of thing so love you Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.